Welcome to QWERTY Writing Life Podcast, where we have candid chats about our creative lives. This is May. And I'm Joy. For more information about our podcast, monthly newsletter, or author resource series, visit us at QWERTYWritingLife.com. That's QWERTY, spelled Q-W-E-R-T-Y. It's the first six letters on your keyboard. So, are you ready? Grab your tea. Or your coffee. And let's chat. Hello, everyone. It's another week. Hello and welcome. Today, we're going to talk about how introspection manages creative expectations. But before we do that, let's talk about our creative weeks. Joy, what did you do? Well, this week we have been decorating for Christmas, and we usually wait until a little bit later in the season, but December is going to be a pretty crazy month. <laughs> we got to looking at our calendar and started looking at the days and realizing, hmm, well, we're either going to do it earlier than usual, or we're not going to do it until it would be a little late. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how that went. Um, but something that was kind of interesting and fun, I thought, as we were decorating and um all of that was we have a new Christmas tree, which is much bigger than one that we've had in the past. We finally did the whole buy it when it's on super sale right after Christmas last year. Um, we've been saying for years that we would do that. So we have this new tree um, with all of our old uh, ornaments and everything. And so it was just kind of an interesting mix of the new and the old. Um, it's fun to think about the decorations and also the, the traditions that we have and find ways to include things that we've done forever, but find fresh ways to do things as well. Mm. So um, we added one other thing this year is, you know, we always do Advent stuff. And so we'll have like devotionals that we do. But I also have this little string of uh, cards with verses that we can read each day from December 1st through the 25th. And so we've kind of gotten to where we do more of the devotionals that we actually read together as a family, but I wanted to keep putting this little garland up with the verses, and people can kind of read those on their own. Well, we also have a family Bible, you know, those big Bibles that people put like on a coffee table or something like that. So we've had one of those. We've had it for years. We actually do have it um, in the little shelf underneath our coffee table. Uh, and I finally, I don't know why this didn't dawn on me until this year, but we pulled that Bible out and it's my son's job to go through and every morning, cause he's the first one to wake up usually <laughs> to go through and find the verses for the day and open the Bible to that and put it out and open on our coffee table so that when we get up, we can all just go right over and read it there. Mm -hmm. So that was um, just kind of something that we added this year that I thought was pretty special. Yeah. So I thought those were the creative things of my week more than anything else that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. I love the idea of mixing the old and the new traditions together um, and then giving that a job while he's, <laughs> while he's waking up in the morning. Yep. <laughs> and I do love the garland with the Bible verses on there and stuff like that. We do devotionals together as a family too. Um, but I love that little extra piece where they get to do something, uh, you know, as individuals. So mm -hmm. it kind of not only brings you together as a family when you do your family devotionals, but it also um, emphasizes the relationship with Christ on an individual level in mm -hmm. that way too. And that's beautiful. I might steal it. I totally <laughs> should. I need to find where I got. I actually found somewhere online these adorable little cards that you print out. And it has um, in the festive red and green mm -hmm. colors the numbers. And then on the back, it has the Bible verses. And I did this several years ago, so I'm going to have to go and find where it was. But I just yeah. printed them out and cut them out. And I laminated them, you know, cut mm -hmm. them out and put them on little... Um, what is that called? Jute? Is that what they call like the brown like ribbon or string or whatever? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I used that to do it. I'll have to send you a picture later. <laughs> yes. Do that, please. I'd love to see it. Well. <laughs> so what about you? Tell us about your creative week. Well, um, it's been it's been another busy one. Uh, got all of these 
big things that are happening at work that takes up more time than 40 hours a week. And that's okay. Um, Right now it's okay because I'm hoping at the end of all of this, it's really going to just make life a little bit, well, actually I'm hoping it makes it a lot easier because we're getting some good consultation in there for marketing. We're getting some good software in there for recruitment. We're still going to be a little bit lacking on our data entry end, but, um, but we're in a good path to be Mm -hmm. set up really well in the next year or two. So, um, all of this hard work is going to be totally worth it. And just being able to look and see a light at the end of the tunnel and to be able to kind of feel some relief of the pressure because, um, because, you know, I'm running a staff of people who are really, really tired right now. It's just a really good feeling, um, to be able to, to know that all of the efforts are going to be worth it at the end of the day. So there's that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and that's creative in itself, you know, creatively looking how to look at this kind of thing, because you're able to see past the, you know, overwhelm of the moment to what that's leading to. And I think that that's special. Right. Right. And I I can't think about like all of it all together. I have to think about it, like the, the next step that I have to take, like your, your next right step, your next, you know, the next thing. Um, if I start thinking about all of the projects that are happening all at the same time <laughs> and, and the end results of all of those and how much work it's going to be on each individual project and then add that all together, like it's just really overwhelming. I just want to sit in a puddle and cry. But if I... <laughs> But if I think about just like, okay, what's the next immediate deadline? Mm -hmm. What's the next step I can take? Like, how can I make this moment better? Mm -hmm. Um, Or what can I do in this moment to bring me a little bit closer to to the next the next thing? Mm -hmm. Then uh, then I'm finding that I may survive this (laughs) potentially. (laughs) (laughs) You will most definitely. No (laughs) doubts here. Well, I'm so thankful for the people that I work with too, because they're keeping the office like in some sort of functioning order while I am doing all of these big projects. And I'm just, I'm so thankful to be able to rely on them to continue that. Um, I'm still having to do like the day-to-day stuff as well as the big projects that, that I normally do. Um, but you know, they're really maintaining their functions in the offices in the office. And, and I'm just so thankful because if they weren't, this would all be so much harder so very much harder and we would just I mean I can't I can't hold everything together I'm I'm not glue right so um so super thankful for the people who are around me at this time um super thankful for people like Joy because she is my (laughs) mental stability (laughs) and um and and a good friend to be able to to say uh to talk things through and all of that so um so that's happening right now um I am also, on top of that, I think I'm coming to a place where I'm able to start um, really evaluating outside of emotion for what happened on the writer's retreat. And I haven't talked about that very much because there's just been, I mean, there were so many emotional things that happened there. I mean, I can talk about the practicalities and how like all the knowledge that I got and, you know, all of the the friendships that, you know, were cultivated there, but there was something internal that happened to me that was totally unexpected and I've not been able to really process. And I thought I was, I thought I was in a different place and there were things that were revealed to me (laughs) because of the way that, that, that my emotions did, um, that I didn't know that I needed to work on. And now I know. So I think that, you know, it's just trying to understand yourself a little bit better. And so this has been, what was it? Excuse me. That was in September, the very end of September. I think I left on October the 1st or something like that. So October, uh, November, today is what, December the 2nd? Today's the first. Today's December the first. So October to November, November to December. So it's been two months that I've just been dealing with emotions and having to grieve things and having to, you know, go through the 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 emotional processing. Mm -hmm. And today, today I was getting out of the shower and all of a sudden I started these words started coming to me in poetry because I I don't know, but that's just how (laughs) that's just how 
That's um, how it comes out to me. Yeah. That's how yeah. My He's like, here's what you need to know. And let me say it to you lyrically. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I started writing a poem, a draft of a poem. And I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, this is, I think that this kind of sums up. I've been trying to find, find the thread, find the words like you know, when emotions hit you and it's all of this amorphous stuff that's coming at you all at once. And, um, I don't know what the real issue is yet. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so I think today I was able to start articulating what the real issue is. And so I, I wrote a poem today. (laughs) That's good. Or a draft of one that's partially finished. (laughs) Well, I'm looking forward to once you have time to kind of flesh it out more and stuff, I look forward to us chatting about it one of these days. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that that moment that happened today, it might even have been because we had this episode Mm -hmm. in the, in the queue, because what we're talking about (laughs) is introspection and knowing yourself and knowing how you work and knowing what you like and knowing what you don't like and things like that. Um, and, I know that this is how I work. I'm super emotional uh, whenever things hit me like this. Like I I cry a lot. I don't know uh, exactly what the issue is. And so if somebody were to ask me, are you okay? I'm like, I don't know. If they ask you what's wrong, I don't know. (laughs) That's (laughs) literally the truthful answer. It's not like me trying to put somebody off. I literally do not know what is wrong (laughs) at this point in time. So I, I don't really talk about things like this a lot until I get to the place where I, um, until I know, but this is your starting point. And yes. So, um, but that's something that we, you know, that I know about myself and joy and I were evaluating the last chat in our last work session. And we were going through these exercises and we were adding things to this and we thought, Oh wow, this is gold, you know, (laughs) really great. Um, but a lot of what we were adding to that was stuff like, what kind of character development do you like? Like what kind of character arcs do you like? What kind of genres do you gravitate toward? Like, like these are questions that were more about you as the writer and less about like practical exercises that you could do in order to be a better critique partner on the surface. That's the way that it felt. And so we got to a point where Joy and I were were talking about this and we're like, wait a minute, is this really necessary? Like, is this, does this even belong in this workbook that we're, <laughs> I don't know if this is your first episode with us, please know that in season four, Joy and I are working through a project together along with uh, the, the listeners here. And so we have had work sessions. And so what we'll do is that at the beginning of each episode, we will, um, our project is uh, the, a workbook edition to be a companion to our author resource book called Finders Keepers, A Practical Approach to Find and Keep Your Writing Critique Partner. So this is all about um, how to be a better critique partner. And so we were getting these exercises about the individual writer who would be reading this in order to get better information about how to be a critique partner, which is only asking questions about them, about themselves. And, uh, And we were just like, is this, Is this even pertinent? Is this even a thing? So, yeah. So we, as we talked through this and we asked that question, we realized, short answer, yes. And then we started kind of talking through why. Why is this important? And it goes back to something that, like you were saying earlier before we started recording, this is something that we've talked about all four seasons, introspection. Uh, We have to know ourselves in order to be a better creative all around. And specifically in this case, to be a better critique partner um, for your fellow writers and or writer. And so you can't do that to the best of your ability if you don't know your likes and your dislikes, the things that you um, gravitate toward and all of these things that each of these challenges um, for the workbook lead writers to do. You know, just getting to understand themselves and a little bit better on that. What do I like and what do I not like? But not stopping there, also having them think through why, the whys of that. And I think that that's another important part to the challenges. So that is that was our short answer, and then that was part of our process of 
you know, coming up with why did we say, yes, it's important. Mm. I would even extend that a little bit further, like identifying like who you are, the things that you like and you don't like, then the why. But then I also would probably say, how does that affect me as a critique partner? Yeah. Um, I would extend it to that as well. Yeah. And and what I mean by that is that, so for example, I um, do not like... <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna, we're gonna put it all out. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so I do not like a miscommunication um, plot like trope mm -hmm. as your main point of conflict. Like if that is your main point of conflict, I know that as somebody who grew up in a home that did not have exceptional communication skills, <laughs> like um, I know how easy it would be to just have a stinking conversation and just, and just air it out and then it's done and everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I find that those as main plot points just irritate me on a, on a level that's a personal level. It's not necessarily a literary level. Like this is a, this is a Megan's experiences have affected her opinion on these particular plot points. Like, so <laughs> don't hear that. I, that I think that literature that has these plot points is invalid. No, that's not the situation at all. It's that I personally have a bias toward these, a negative bias toward these because of my, my life experiences. Mm -hmm. So I know, that about myself so when joy gives me a piece and if a miscommunication is a major plot conflict in her piece I know that I'm not, I'm naturally going to have a negative bias toward it so if I critique on that particular plot conflict thing and uh, then I know that I need to share that bias with joy if I haven't already does that make sense yeah, it does. So, and it shows. That. And then I say, oh, by the way, I have trauma connected to <laughs> <laughs> Lines of red, then, by the way. <laughs> right, right. Well, and also, too, like one of the things that we suggest in the book as well is to like reread all of your comments and commentary mm -hmm. um, before you hand that off. And so I know that that's something that I need if I come across a piece that I am critiquing and that's a main pop conflict. I have to take a step back, remove my emotions, remove myself from the situation and say, is this um, is this good critique for this person or am I being trifling? You know? <laughs> So, um, so that's why I think it's important it's, mm -hmm. uh, to, to not only know the what and the why, but also how it affects you. Yeah, definitely. And it also, um, because I do think that we have a tendency to just stop with the, what do I like and what do I don't like? And right. that's, that's as far as it goes a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And you're missing so much more when you don't take those extra steps and ask those extra questions. Because, you know, in the example that you gave, you are going back and working through something from your personal past, mm -hmm. which is super important. And this goes beyond our role as creatives. Like this, this is something that helps you as a person just in general in life. And I think that that's often the case. I think a lot of times the things that we have strong either aversions to or are, are just drawn to have a deeper root somewhere. And a lot of times it has something to do with, you know, it may not be a trauma or something like that, but something in our past that a lot of times we haven't actually thought through or realized that it was something that stood out to us and impacted the way we view things around us. Um, so just from a personal standpoint, I think that it's super important to ask these additional questions. You know, and the how of it, um, another thing for me that I am, and I know we both tend to do this, like we're people pleasers, like we want to say yes, right, to like everything. And so as writers, obviously, we're in contact with a lot of other writers. 
and there will be, oh, my book's, you know, I'm almost done. You want to read it? Like, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we get that pretty often. And I have learned that I have to be very careful about that because there are certain books that I just don't enjoy. I really don't. And whenever, even if it's not a critique partner, you know, of course, those relationships are the most important. But just for your other writer friends, for our other writer friends out there, we want to be involved with them as much as we can. We want to support and encourage. But if we know that we don't like the kind of book that they write, it's not going to be a big help to them for me to beta read it for them or something. Um, because I'm not their goal audience. And on the other side of that, it's not good for me because I'm going into it, giving up, you know, however much time it takes to read their novel, knowing that I'm not going to enjoy it and I'm not going to be able to give them what they really need from me as a beta reader for them. You know, they're, they're not going to get somebody who's going to want to gush about it to all of my fans or my followers because it's not the kind of book they like, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, right. And as a beta reader, I mean, you have different expectations than you do as a beta reader than as an ARC reviewer than as a critique partner. Right. You know what I mean? They are, like, yeah. And that's yeah. a whole so, other thing. But yeah, I, like, just, I think in, in our case, like, I think the books that we tend to read early for a friend outside of our core critique partner things, which it's there too, but that's not what I'm talking about. Right. Just... There's that level of expectation of, okay, so you like me, I like you, we're friends, you're going to read this book for me, and then you're going to want to share about it, or you're going to want to write a great review, or maybe you'll even write like a, you know, a blurb thing, the little whatever they call it to put on the cover. Right. And so in order to keep myself from being in a situation where suddenly I have to say no further down the line... <laughs> I already know, okay, I'm not going to enjoy this book. I'm going to just graciously and gracefully bow out now so that I don't get into a situation that could be a lot more awkward later. Right. And I'll find other ways to encourage and support that I'm more comfortable with, if that makes sense. Right. Um, I totally agree with that 100%. I've kind of been burned a little bit by that as well. Mm -hmm. Um where I have been given a copy of a book, uh, for example, I've been given a copy of a book. The genre seems spectacular. Like the teaser seems phenomenal. Like I'm really going to enjoy this book. I'm expecting a good experience and a five-star rating. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's just not well done. <laughs> and then, and, That's hard. And to a point where it's not enjoyable. Like to the point where I guessed who the person was because there was too much foreshadowing and like too many clues and stuff like that. It's like, I just don't want to finish it because I know who it is. And then like, if there's not a plot twist at the very end and it's the same person that I thought it was from page 25, then I'm going to be <laughs> so sad. You know? like, and I was so sad. <laughs> But um, but this person had given me a copy of their book. Not only did they give me a copy of the book, they mailed me a tangible copy of their book with a lovely inscription in it. Like it was just so thoughtful. Mm. But I, mm, it was so hard. Uh, so yeah. So this is kind of a different approach too. And so now you know, like, okay, I am not going to uh, reach out and you know, put myself in this kind of situation again, you know, because I know that this doesn't work out well. <laughs> right. And, oh, or, or here's this, um, I'm either not going to do it or I'm going to be very clear with the author beforehand if they, if that person reaches out to me and, and I can just say, you know, I would love to read your book. Um, but it's, I'm going to give an honest review, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, it's, this sounds like something that I would truly enjoy, but I've been burned mm -hmm. and I just want you to know that I'm going to give an honest review. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I can just see your face like, no, take it back. I'll take Never it back. Mind. I'm not doing it at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I don't like, I don't always review things. So I have kind of come to this point Agreed. where mm -hmm. I actually, and I'm not a book reviewer. So like, that's not. That's not my platform. Yes, mm -hmm. I share 
book reviews because, of course, like the people who get my email and follow me on social media, they like to read. That's why they're Mm -hmm. following me. And I tend to read similar books to the ones that I write. So the Mm -hmm. people who follow me tend to like the kinds of books that I like. Um, So, of course, I'm going to share that. But I will not leave a review when I can't find redeeming things. I just don't. Right. Also, mm-hmm. if I have read something that, and this goes back to our topic, if it's a book that I know is not my preferred genre, but I I tried something outside of my comfort zone, like mm-hmm. I'm not going to leave a review because right. that's a me thing. Yeah. Like I don't like this kind of book anyway, but I tried it and no, I didn't really like this. Now, if on the other hand, if it was something that I don't usually read, but I really enjoyed it, then I would, of course, leave a review and, you know, put in there, hey, I don't usually read this kind of book. And I was pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed X, Y, Z, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So I do because, and I, I guess I have that luxury because I'm not a book reviewer. I can make that choice and decide if I'm going to leave a review or not. Right. Okay. So I am um, re- not redacting my previous thing, but maybe I'm altering it a little bit to say that maybe the honesty part can be, you know, if, you know, not every reader is for, for everybody. This sounds like there's going to be something that I would enjoy. Like I generally love these kind of tropes and these kind of stories. So I'm very excited to read your arc or whatnot. Um, however, if the if if my review is not going to be a four or five, would you prefer that I just not leave one? <laughs> you know, or something yeah. like that. Or I prefer if my review is not, you know, a three, four or five, then I would prefer not to leave a review. Is that cool with you? Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that idea. Just being up forward with or up mm-hmm. front with that. Yeah. yeah. And just, you know, I could even cite the situation. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, bringing this back to um, our specific purposes with the workbook for Mm -hmm. uh, Finders Keepers. So how this plays out for writers specifically, um, and I think that this can apply to other creative um, mediums as well. Yes. We, perhaps we want to try something new as a writer. Maybe we want to try writing in a different genre or something like that. So if you know yourself and you know that this isn't something that you have done before, first of all, but also even it could be something that you really aren't that fond of. Um, For example, I decided to try out some um, kind of paranormal, not necessarily horror, but definitely extreme suspense to, to write in that. And that's not something that I typically read. Uh, And it's not something that I, necessarily enjoy but I wanted to play around with it so a couple of things because I knew those things about myself that's not really my necessarily my cup of tea and I don't have a lot of experience with it I knew one that I had some things to learn about the genre Um, two I needed to kind of give myself a little bit of grace and understand that Whatever I came out with the first time around probably wasn't going to be that great. You know, this is just me learning and dabbling and playing a little bit. Um, So I think that that's another thing that we talked about in, you know, of course, the context of the chat that we were discussing was um, preparing for a critique, I think. I think that's the one. Yeah, that was the chat that we were talking about, the preparing for a critique. So this can go either way. This can go for things that you're wanting to write. And actually put out there it could also go for things that you are going to be critiquing or reading right Um, and in response because I think I read that story that you um, that you wrote on that mm -hmm. um, and spiritual paranoia is something that I do not take to and Mm -hmm. you chose a spiritual aspect to the paranormal if I recall correctly Mm -hmm. is that okay gotcha so I knew whenever I was reading that story that this was a spiritual paranormal paranormal Mm -hmm. and that I needed to you know tread lightly Mm -hmm. whenever I was reading it so and I typically kind of steer clear of that stuff too and I was kind Mm -hmm. of 
you know, more of that introspection, like I was actually thinking through some things as far as the spiritual realm, you know, angels Mm -hmm. and demons and stuff like that. So like in my personal life, I was also thinking through some of those things as I was kind of experimenting with that genre. So Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a whole lot of introspection there. Right. And it's interesting too, because I decided to write a short story. It was actually supposed to be flash fiction and I did the flash fiction piece. It was supposed to be 500 points or less. And then it was on a Halloween piece. And then I expanded it to be a short story um, beyond 500 words because I felt like there was so much more that was not in there, (laughs) but I don't write, I don't write horror or suspense or any of that stuff. And so it was for competition that I wrote it. And I thought that maybe my craft level would be able to compensate for the fact that I don't normally write in that genre. Uh, but there are things that I loved about the the piece. Mm-hmm. And I think what I could put in there because of, of my insp- introspection and because I knew that this is not something that I normally would write in, I, I picked things that I do love. Mm-hmm. Like I love low-level magic in, <laughs> in books. <laughs> And so in my story that I wrote for Halloween, there was low level magic in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I am fascinated, fascinated with traveling circuses and (laughs) (laughs) like, how do you live that life? Super fascinated with like, how do you not have a home base? Like how, how do you make yourself your home base? Like this is all very interesting to me. So I had a Halloween story that had low level magic and, and involved um, a traveling circus. Yeah. I also love tattoos. And so my low level magic involved, well, a portion of my low level magic involved like tattoos that were moving and alive and that sort of thing. So, um, so I was able to encompass certain things about, that I love about other types of genres and, and just like these little things I could pull out of my, my bucket and pop into that horror and suspense story. And it still is a, it's still a May story, right? It's, you know, because of those things that I love, I was able to just to pop in there. But there was a bit of hubris too, because it did not turn out as I had hoped. I could not edit it to perfection because I might need to do a little more research into horror and suspense in order to know how to craft it properly. Yeah. Well, those are very specific genres. I feel like that and the pacing is very specific and the just the way that you craft those types of stories, but you are a hundred percent right. Like it was definitely a May story. Like, you were in that. And I feel like you did it really well. I certainly enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I love how like you can pull like those pieces that you love into the other things that you write and stuff like that. So, right. but before you can do that, you got to know what you love. Exactly. Exactly. And that's all about the introspection people. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's time for a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. We don't have one. We don't have one. We're going to introspect. That's what we're going to do. You're going to go be introspective. Like, <laughs> don't make us be more creative, people. Can't you figure this out yourselves? <laughs> I feel like we should just leave it like that. I know. I know. Go introspect yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can think of some things that maybe some guidance in your introspectiveness that we will do this week as a challenge. <laughs> For the course. Um, <laughs> so um, and just this depends upon your medium, of course, as well. So um, I think identify pieces within your medium that you either you, that you have strong emotions about that you either really love or you really don't love. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and then I think you ask those questions. So you've identified it. Then you ind- identify why you don't love it or you really do love it. And then I think the next step is going to be how is that, how are you going to take that knowledge and, and have it affect your future projects? Yeah, I think that's perfect. We hope that this is helpful for you guys and that this is something that you take and embrace and that it just works really well for you. Yeah. And we hope you have a great week. Yes. And go make something. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this episode encouraged you. 
Like all creatives, we thrive on consumer recommendations. So please consider leaving us a review and sharing our podcast with your creative friends. If you'd like to continue this conversation, visit us on our website at QWERTYWritingLife.com or on Instagram at QWERTYWritingLife.